you'll be expected to know all different types of cardiomyopathy on your test. And this one here, this one is called apical hypertrophy. This is where just the apex of the left ventricle is thickened or hypertrophied. So you'll have this ace of spades look to the apical left ventricular apex. So this is an image without contrast, with contrast. With this type of cardiomyopathy, it's difficult to get a good personal long axis. Anytime you start a personal long axis view and you find yourself struggling to get it, even if you've been doing it for a long time, it's there's probably a good chance that it, this patient has apical hypertrophy because it's almost impossible to get that good plaques view. And it's probably right. due to how thick the apex is. So you have the, the spade sign. It's uh, you got the apical hypertrophy. This is another image of uh, apical hypertrophy. And this image here shows all four chambers of the heart. And it's not the clearest image, but on your boards, you're not going to have the most clear image. And you almost right. have to just kind of use your best judgment. So if it said, you know, what kind of cardiomyopathy is this? And it's not very that clear. Would be apical. Yeah, this is apical. Obviously, it won't be labeled like this. But if you Amy. see an image that you can't make out or you can't identify right away, go through the um, trial of elimination. So you start eliminating what is not the answer. So, you know, is it non-compaction? Probably not, but we don't know for sure without contrast. And if they did show a non-compaction, it would have to be more clear than this. Right. So, um, and also you can see right here in this MRI image, you can see how thick it's here, how thick it is in the apex and kind of has that ace of spades look. So <clears throat> you want to just kind of rule out what options it's not and then kind of narrow it down to the more likely options. And so this would most likely be apical hypertrophy. It's not going to be a clot. It's not going to be uh, hyper eosinophils, uh, endocarditis. I'll show you an image of that later. And it's... Uh, what else could it be? It's definitely not a tumor because it would be more obvious than that. Um, I know I have... Okay, here we go. So strain. Yeah, so normal strain. Uh, normal strain will have all red and any number that's above 16, negative 16, which is actually below, but we say above just to uh, keep it simple. Uh, uh, okay. And I'm trying to go okay. to, okay, here's, yeah. Oh my gosh, sorry. Okay, so here's a really good example of apical hypertrophy on strain. And do not get this confused with amyloidosis because they're almost the exact opposite in colors. So in apical hypertrophy, because the apex is so thickened, you're going to have reduced strain in the apex and it's either going to be bright pink or okay. in this image obviously uh, light blue to dark blue and with the darkest being right close to the middle so okay. it'll be reduced strain as you kind of move out from the apex and then it'll be normalized everywhere else because it's not thickened in all the other segments just the apex so if it the more thickened it is it's going to be okay. a lighter pink or a lighter or dark blue okay. Does that make sense yes okay now let's quickly go over amyloidosis and amyloidosis is going to have that speckle appearance in the myocardium okay it's it's the ground glass appearance with amyloid, you're going to have the speckled appearance. You're going to have a concentric hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. 
and right. you'll have a thickened interatrial septum, uh, your atria will be enlarged. This is important. Your valves will be thickened. That's important to know. That's a good indication that helps support amyloidosis. And one thing I didn't mention in this was a lot of the times you'll see pericardial effusion. If you want to adjust your settings to kind of help visualize the ground glass appearance, you'll want to turn off harmonics. So the H pen, you'll want to change it to just pen or gen or res. The H stands for harmonics. Okay. So if you take that off, then you'll be able to see the ground glass appearance really well. Okay. Here's a couple images here. You see how evenly thickened they are? Here and here. Yes. Here and here, and then all the way around. Very concentric. And you can see that little pericardial effusion there. You can see how thickened the valves are. Atria are probably enlarged. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So then, when we go back to strain uh, for amyloid, it's going to be the exact opposite of apical hypertrophy. So it'll be the opposite of that, and we call that the apical sparring or cherry on top and this is what it looks mm -hmm. like so you have dark red in the center or the apex oh, okay and then it gets gradually decreased as we move out from the apex okay so dark red in the middle and then decreased strain everywhere else So just think cherry on top and apical sparring. Okay. Cool on that? And that's for um, That's amyloid. for amyloidosis, correct. Sure. Yep. Okay. Yep, very good. Okay. Then the most common infiltrated disease is amyloidosis. That's worth writing down. And the most common cause of restrictive cardiomyopathy is amyloidosis. Non-compaction. Okay, so this one comes up quite a bit. So left ventricular non-compaction. Uh, this is a congenital condition where the trabecula of the left ventricle don't really form okay. The way they should. They just kind of stop forming after a certain point. And so we're left with these recesses in the myocardium. And as a result, the left ventricle loses the ability to contract normally. So you can kind of appreciate these little recesses here in the myocardium here. And yeah. So you can see the sinus and the um, hypertrabeculation. With this type of condition, you have to use contrast, like here, to make absolutely okay. sure it's non-compaction. Because you can have an echo that looks like this, and it will come out to be right. it'll come out to be looking normal. So contrast is kind of the way to go to help. Um, prevent any uh, misdiagnoses of this condition. Okay. So you'll have systolic dysfunction. And really, the only treatment for this type of condition is uh, medication, and then eventually they just have to have a heart transplant, a new heart. Okay. So with contrast, you can see the recesses here and the 
uh, hypertrabeculation. Stress cardiomyopathy, know that this is associated with uh, non-coronary artery disease. So what happens is the coronary arteries will vasospasm for whatever reason, either because the patient is going through a traumatic event and they've lost the will to live or uh, they are, they're not thriving like they should. So their coronary arteries will start the vasospasm and as a result will reduce the amount of blood getting to the myocardium and to perfuse the heart walls. So the heart walls get stunned and lose the ability to contract. And what happens is the apex and some mid portions of the left ventricle will start to balloon out and they'll have preserved or hypercontractile function of the basal segments. And they call it Takasubo cardiomyopathy because in Japan they have these Takasubo traps that will catch an octopus. And I think I have an right. image here of that, hopefully somewhere. Maybe no, I don't. Uh, I don't have it. But it's a trap that looks like the head of an octopus, kind of like like this would be. So in this image, you can see how this is kind of bloomed out. This is in systole, by the way. So you have the basal segments who, that are compensating be, by being more hypercontractile and the mid and apical portions of the left ventricle are uh, weak and they're ballooning out, more so the apex area. So again, it's, not, okay. it's a non-coronary uh, artery disease, it's just a moment of uh, basal spasm that prevents blood to perfuse the myocardium. And on EKG, okay. you're going to have these T wave inversions as a result. So anytime you have like something going on with the apex, if it's uh, if it's not squeezing or ballooning, if it's ballooning out, like in Takasubo, you'll get these T wave inversions.